This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and today I want to talk about Drive Club and my experiences with it coming off of E3 2014. This was actually my first chance to actually really test out and try Drive Club for the first time. And at E3, you only get to do it in a very limited capacity, and that's part of the whole experience, I guess. Now, coming off of the show, I'm going to tell you, Drive Club is one of those games that I am the most excited about. It is very gamey, admittedly. You talk to the publishers, and they'll tell you this is not a simulation and they're even using Forza and Gran Turismo to define the word simulation. They are going after more of an arcade but they have their own approach and when we talk about E3 there are several games there that are very comparable and I'm going to talk about each one but again today we're here to talk about Drive Club. Now one thing to talk about Drive Club right out of the gates is they are a little delayed. They actually were going to come out almost a year ago, but there were delays, various different things that they cited examples as to why they are delayed. But in the end, they're going to come out October 7th this year, and that means they're almost here, but what we're looking at it probably isn't that far off from a final build. Now, as I mentioned, this is definitely an arcade-type title. They talk about it that way, but they wanted to still capture some true, authentic driving experience. So they talk about having about 50 different cars. All of them are going to be cars that you would know by name. You would recognize immediately iconic type cars. And all of them are going to have distinct properties or physics or handling properties that you're going to experience. So you would know the difference between a Ferrari or an Aston Martin or a rough Porsche or any of the different cars. You'd know it by sound, you'd know it by the, the looks obviously, and you'd also know it by the way it handles. So they are going for that type of a simulation and that you're going to have a real experience in each of these cars uniquely. Now on the arcade side of things, you always have barriers keeping you onto the track. That is one thing that you're going to have. I call it the Sega driving line is my old way, way of describing this when you just have a guardrail or something that prevents you from going far off the track entirely. However, there are things that will still cause you problems. I mean, there are uh, driveways, for example, or something that you could get hung up on. You can definitely spin the car out and go all the way around or even drive backwards. I didn't try driving backwards to find out if it penalizes you, but I know you can spin all the way around, so theoretically you could go backwards. So you do have a combination of arcade effects along with simulation type things or things that at least make it so that you're going to have a benefit of taking the right driving line. Now at the show I was only able to drive one of the cars with a steering wheel. That was with the new Thrustmaster steering wheel which I'll talk about later. But I did get to feel some of the force feedback at least with the Aston Martin. In that car when I got heavy on the gas and heavy on the wheel I would feel an unloading. There was some good force feedback letting me know what was going on little bit of good damage collision things like that but I wasn't really able to focus on it because it was only one run that I got to do with the wheel. Now I did get to try out all of the cars and at the show they had eight different cars you could drive. They had the Aston Martin as I mentioned, it's the V12 Vantage S, they had the Audi R8 V10 Coupe, the rough RT12 R edition, a Ferrari F12 Berlinetta, the BAC Mono, the Ferrari 458 Italia, the Mercedes-Benz SLS AMG Coupe Black Edition, and the McLaren 12C. All of the cars handled uniquely, and they also had four different categories that would define their handling. Acceleration, top speed, handling, and drifting. The other thing they had a great demonstration of is the different types of regions that they're going to have. In Drive Club, you're going to have point-to-point -point racing. They say they're going to have some real racetracks and some fantasy racetracks. But what I did love was they had a nice canyon course where you're just kind of going through what felt like driving the roads out in the canyons of Southern California, it almost felt like. And visually, that was a very good experience. To make those views even better, they also had day-to-night transitions, which was really cool and they're going to have weather effects in the game when it does come out for release or in the first patch that follows it. But that's stuff that I can really see and with the graphics package they had, which is 1080 running at 30 frames per second, it was very smooth and it did look very good. And this is some of the best car modeling and some of the best visual effects I've seen. They've done a really, really good job of that with Drive Club. 
Another thing that a lot of people, both sim and gamer type drivers, are going to appreciate about Drive Club is the multiple different driving views. You had a few different out of car views from behind the car that you could drive from. You had a couple of different interior views. You had the bonnet view or the hood cam. So you had lots of different views to work from, which is really nice. You would also get into a collision and you'd see the whole car go clear. That's a great effect to help you kind of understand that you're damaging the car. And while we're talking about damage, the cars are perfect. They're perfect and you can visually scratch them up. You can do a little bit of denting, but you can't really knock any bumpers off it seems. But there is no physical damage going on. It's only visual, which is where it also stays on the gamey side. Now, while we're talking about gamey side, another thing that is very clear about this game is that you have that rubber band effect. When you're driving perfectly and you're out front, it seems to kind of uncork some of the physics, give you a little bit more of a driving edge or put it more on you. Now, when you're at the rear of the grid, when you're trying to catch up, it's doing everything it can to help you out, but there's enough simulation to it that it's not like all of a sudden your car is going twice as fast. You still got to do your job as a driver, or if the leader finishes, the game will time out and you're not going to finish the race. Now let's talk about the racing and maybe the main point of driving club or drive club. And that comes down to, I think, the multiplayer. You have these teamed events and while you're out on track, you'll have these challenges. Maybe it's an average speed challenge and you'll see a start line and you'll know which competitor you're racing against, who's setting an average lap time, and it's on you to come through that section at a quicker time. And if you do, you get drive club points, which I assume will work for upgrades and things when you get into the fully uncorked version of the game. There are a few of these additional side games while out racing on the circuit. As I mentioned, average speed face-off, cornering face-off, and drifting face-off. You can also get additional points for drafting, for passing, and then you can actually lose points for crashing into guardrails and things. So you're always having points, additional points being added and subtracted from your score while you're obviously racing for time. So a lot of cool things, and then to that you add the whole team event. You could have a six on six where you're racing for both time and club points and got that whole rivalry thing going. There's a lot of fun to be had in Drive Club. I'm trying to think of anything else I've left out from what I experienced in this very small edition of Drive Club at E3. They did have the Alp region, which reminds me of something else I didn't mention. With the weather effects, you are gonna have additional handling changes. So when you're in the dirt or got two wheels in the dirt, it's gonna get slippery. When you're in the rain, you're gonna feel it. The car is gonna do some hydroplaning. When you're in the ice, it's gonna do some slipping and sliding. So there's a lot of fun to be had with Drive Club and it's one of the games that I'll be looking forward to this year very much and I can't wait to cover it here on the show. So that's gonna do it for Drive Club E3 2004. This is The Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole and I'll see you on the track.